We have been fruitful. We have been fruitful. Pastor Wilson, why did you say that? I said that because I have statistics. In 1993, on the first Sunday of the opening, we had less than 150 human beings together that began. Less than, less than 150. About 47 adults. Less than 150 human beings that began at Family Worship Center. Today, we are over 14,000. We have been fruitful. We have been fruitful. We have been fruitful. From one care group, 1993, today, we have over 900 care groups. Pre-COVID, I didn't check how many we are right now. We have been fruitful. Have we not been fruitful? We have been fruitful. From one branch church, renting an apartment in Hilton, just one branch, we came to four. We came to six. On the 6th of June, we became 16. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. And it is with joy this morning to declare to your hearing that by September 12th, we will add another 30. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. But God wants us to move from this level of fruitfulness to where? Much fruit. Much fruit. So what should we do as a church? What we are doing already. We just have to be focused and do it more. What should we do? What should we do? The first thing I'll say looks like something you already know. First of all, I want you to accept the fact that it is God's will for you and for the church to be fruitful. Have you accepted that? So let's say it together. It's God's will for me and the church to be fruitful so we can multiply, so we can fill the earth, so we can subdue the earth, then exercise dominion. Say, I accept it. It is God's will for me to be fruitful. Let it sink. Let it sink. Let it sink. It is God's will for you to be fruitful. It is God's will for you to be fruitful. If you are a single person, it is God's will for you to be married, except you decide I don't want, which is okay, acceptable. It's not a sin. But if you want, it is God's will for you to be married. If you are married, it is God's will for you to have children. It is God's will for you to own your own house and have other houses that you help people with. It is God's will. The Bible says for us to have and to have extras to be a blessing. We serve an abundant-minded God. He came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So receive. That's the first thing. Accept it. If the enemy has told you that you are not supposed to be fruitful, hear the truth of the Lord. God wants you to be fruitful. If your family, if your ancestors have told you and have done anything to make sure you are not fruitful, I came in the power of the Holy Spirit this morning to declare to you that whether they like it or not, you will be fruitful because God commanded you to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. So the first thing is to accept it. For as a man thinks, so he is. So he is. The second thing is to refuse any excuse for being fruitless. Oh, our world has a lot of excuses now. There are no jobs. There are no contracts. Unless you know somebody in government. If you are not from the north, if you are tall, if you can't speak this tribe, all kinds of excuses. The next thing is to review, refuse. As an individual and as a church, it is time for us to refuse any excuse for not being fruitful. That excuse is not tenable. It's not tenable. Somebody say it's not tenable. Exodus 1.12. I love that scripture. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. You're an Israelite in the spirit. You carry the same gene in you. 
the more they are afflicted. And what is that place saying? The tougher it gets, the more they expand. The tougher it gets, the more they expand. And that is why I like some brothers in this church who made extra monies last year, opened new shops last year, broke through last year. While we were locked down in the house, they were exploding. Why? The more they afflicted them, the more they multiply. That is the empowerment. And God blessed them. And said, be fruitful. God says, there is no affliction that should stop you from being fruitful. So today we refuse every and any excuse that will accept so that we can remain where we are. We refuse it. What should we do? We must become united as a church. We must become united as a church. Some of us are saying, mm, that is for the pastors. That is for the leaders. No. We must become one in this agreement to multiply as a church. We must become one in this decision to be fruitful as a church. We must become one. Every man, once you have made family worship center your church, you belong to this assembly. And every mandate on this assembly is upon you. We must unite. We must agree that it is our vision. The 30 churches coming is our responsibility. The 100 churches in one year is our collective responsibility. We must unite. For two are better than one. One will chase a thousand. Two will chase 10,000. In Genesis 1, 1 to 6, the Bible talks about a group of people who came together. And they said, we will build a tower that reaches to the high heavens. And the Bible began to say, these people are one. They have one language. They have one speech. Nothing that they begin to do can be withheld from them. We must become one. And once we are one, once we agree, nobody can withhold 100 churches from us. And that is a proof of fruitfulness. That is filling the land. That is subduing the land. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We must agree. So it's not just for pastors. It's not just for care group leaders. It's not just for intercessory ministry. It's for all of us. Somebody say, I'm implicated. Say, I'm ready. Say, I'm willing. So united in doing what? United in praying. We must be united in praying. The next time Sister Monica comes up stage to lead us in praying for soul winning and church planting, you pray as if you are praying for your personal need. Why? Because we are united in it. Some of us, the moment that a certain prayer point is raised, you sit down. Why? You think it's not your own. I came to let you know today that it is your own. Somebody say, it's my own. United in praying. We pray for the vision to become a reality. We pray that the stronghold of the enemy is broken. We pray that the covering on people's eyes is removed. We pray that wherever we are taking the church to, that that location is open, that every prince supervising those places will yield to the power of the gospel. The Bible says you cannot enter a strong man's house and take his good on except you first bind the strong man. We pray to bind every strong man in the places we are going. But we pray united. The same thing happens with prayer. When two pray, the power is more than one praying. And when ten pray, the power is more than two praying. Glory to God. So we unite in praying. We unite in fasting. And I said that to say it to you again. In your own home, concerning your personal thing, be united. Husband and wife, be united for that goal. And go to God and say, Father, in this family, we agree concerning this. We are tired of paying rent. We are tired of landlord harassing us. We believe for our own. We are tired of this boy misbehaving. We believe husband and wife learn to agree, be united. United for everything. In Matthew 18, 18 to 20, it says, if two of you shall agree concerning any matter as touching heaven and doses, as long as it's in the will of God. So what we do in church, you do at home. We unite in praying. Look at the scripture Sister Monica used, Ezekiel 37, 36, 37. He said, if you pray to me, 
that inquire is basically, if you pray to me, I will increase your men like flock. Obina, imagine anchor men like flock. My president, anchor men like flock. Wherever you go in this city and in the world, anchor will have influence. We unite in prayer. We unite in prayer. What else do we unite to do? We unite in going. Last week, Pastor Kide came here and gave us a powerful sermon that is like many sermons that we have done. Go. Don't be like Mr. Johnny Be Good. Don't just know and sit down. We unite in going. Going is not for pastors. Going is not for care group leaders alone. This going now, for us to get the result, must be all of us going. So it's time for groups of four to go. It's time for a group of 12 to go. It's time for departments to go. It's time for people to come together as a care group and go. It is time for us to unite in going. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We go. In going, iron sharpens iron. Somebody who is not bold becomes bold. Somebody who is not learned becomes learned. Somebody who is timid becomes very courageous. We go united. And when the enemy sees the group coming, the enemy bows. So we unite in praying. We unite in going. We go. Some of us have not gone out. Yesterday is the last day that you will not go out. From today, receive grace to go out. Say, I will go in the name of Jesus. What else do we do? We unite in giving. As we prepare to plant the remaining 90 churches, 30 in September, and 60 left, we must unite in giving. We must unite in giving. This work needs work, and this work needs money. Fruitfulness in this area requires money. Somebody say money. Money, for your information, is not a bad thing. Did you hear what I said? Money is a tool. Money is a servant. It's just that it depends on whose hand the money is. Money doesn't spoil anybody. Money just magnifies who they already are. Did you hear that? Money doesn't spoil people. It just magnifies who they already are. <laughs> they say he is very, very humble. Just give him some money. <laughs> you will know if he is humble. Money. We give. I beg you, don't excuse yourself from this. Don't. I don't know if in our own lifetime, before our children and teenagers take over from us, we will be able to do anything mega like this again. This is huge. 100 churches in one year. You cannot be left out of this. You can't. You can't. Ask God, what do you want me to give? He will tell you. One thing I know about God is that he does not cheat anybody. And if you say, okay, I have asked, I'm not hearing, then decide. Don't say until I hear. No. Since you don't know how to hear, decide. <laughs> decide. Decide. And I'll tell you the best decision you'll make. Decide on something that will pinch you. My Bible says that those who go sowing with tears shall doubtless, somebody said doubtless, return with sheaves rejoicing. Since you are not hearing any amount, or you don't want to hear, which is okay. <laughs> He's not angry with you. Just decide. But decide on something that pinch. Oh, my wife and I, we made a decision. It has not been easy. Uh, the first one was very easy. The three, the three that follow, because we do it monthly. This is like four months now. It has not been easy. This last one, we didn't have it. We had to go and start liquidating things that were already on ground. Because we want to make it monthly until it finishes. Decide. I want heaven to have a record that when this thing was done, Pastor Wilson was in it. Do you understand? It pleases heaven. It pleases heaven. It pleases heaven. It pleases heaven. If you say you love God, 
Let your money follow your love. Pastor has told us many times, and some of you know, I love you, I love you, I love you. And all he's been giving you is letters and text. No gift. That is not love. Oh. That is a crook. <laughs> when you love, you give. For God so loved the world that he It's getting lighter now that you are clapping. The thing was heavy before. I'm happy now that you are clapping. For us to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue the earth and exercise dominion, it is God's will for Family Worship Center to expand and take branches from Wuye to Lokoja, from Lokoja to Kaduna to Lagos to London to South Africa to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. Why? He says you have received power. And therefore, because you have received power, be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. Jerusalem, Uye, Judea, Kaduna, Samaria, London, New York, Australia. Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. And everywhere the church goes, your account is credited with an alert. Believe you me. Anywhere this church goes because of your seed, your account is credited with an alert. Sometimes it may not be money. A credit of healing. A credit of deliverance. A credit of blessing. A credit of favor. For God owes no man. Listen carefully. If he says the laborer is worthy of his wages, he commanded it. Do you think he himself will turn around and begin to owe laborers? No. For every cobble you give, God knows that it's your sweat. Listen carefully. Every cobble you give, God knows that it's your sweat. God knows that you labor for it. And God will never cheat you. So we unite in praying. We unite in going. We unite in giving. Give money. Pledge. Make a pledge. Be bold about it. Give land. Give land. Give equipment. Give is the work of the Lord. You will not be cheated. Every time I come into this building, I know that my land is inside. The first land I got as a human being in this city, I carried it in the envelope like that and took it to Elder Eugene, the chairman of the building committee, and said, this is my Isaac. It's part of why you see me bold in this household. Nobody can tell me anything here. <laughs> <laughs> ah. And nobody can drive me from here. This house, I carried concrete. I poured concrete in some of these places. You didn't have opportunity that time. This is your own opportunity. This is your opportunity. You will not let it fall. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants us to be fruitful. As a person, he wants you to be fruitful. As a family, he wants you to be fruitful. And the aim of the fruitfulness at the end of it so that you end up in dominating. Amen. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Then have 